Hello and welcome to my video on how I eat healthy, cheap, and without cooking much from the road. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Autumn and in the spring of 2022, I decided to embark on my lifelong dream of living tiny, living nomadically, and living rent and mortgage free. And on this channel, I take you along with me on the adventures. I share all about how I do it and also show you all the beautiful places I visit. So if you're interested in this kind of content, definitely hit that subscribe button below. I'm really excited to make this video because nutrition, health, wellness, and psychological behavioral health related to food is a huge part of my life. In fact, it is a core part of my professional work that I do at sweetestfreedom.com. This video is going to be broken into two main parts. The first part, I'm going to share a bit about my personal and professional perspective with food. I lost 70 pounds about 15, 16 years ago and I have sustained that weight loss throughout my life. And all of the struggles I had around binge eating led me on this professional path where I specialized in understanding what is true nutrition and what is this bizarre experience in the human condition where I long and have this drive and become a slave to dopamine, to pleasure. In the second part of the video, I talk all about what I actually eat from the road. So if you want to skip kind of hearing the experience and philosophy side of things, just skip right on ahead. I did put chapters in this video so that way you can just check out what specifically I eat from the road. The way that I see nutritional health is there as an ideal and there's the reality of real daily life. We eat multiple times a day every single day so we're not going to hit that ideal and if we try to hit that ideal in a perfectionistic way that in and of itself is a compulsion all its own and then we can get into black and white thinking where it's like if i don't hit this ideal then i am just flinging the other way having whatever i want and totally like off the rails so to speak what i believe is really psychologically healthy is you have your ideal. You would know what you're striving for. You know what sort of principles of nutrition ground you to guide what you generally are gonna eat. And then you allow yourself to sway as if you're in a grading system from like a C minus to an A minus from time to time. You rarely wanna get that A plus because you don't wanna feed the perfectionism. I would say that generally speaking, I probably give myself a C plus to an A minus at different points in time. Every now and then when I'm really stressed out, I slip into the D zone. I recently slipped into the F zone. When I was all stressed out and fulsome, I turned to sugar in a compulsive way and I could see it in my videos. I actually wanna show you, here's what I look like when I'm healthy. Here's what I look like the day after eating too much sugar. You can see it. So even though I had that slip, there wasn't any compensatory behaviors. There wasn't like, oh, I need to go on a diet. I need to go on a detox. It was, I just need to come right back to center to my C plus to A minus range and just eat well. So this nutritional ideal that I strive for really comes from Michael Pollan. Eat real food, not too much, mostly plants. I love that. I love it because there are so many compete eating dietary philosophies out there. Some of them really helpful and beneficial, some of them severely destructive that leads to malnutrients and eating disorders. Eat real food. What that means to me in particular is avoid very specific types of processed food, mainly processed sugar, first and foremost. In fact, how did I lose 70 pounds? I significantly reduce my processed sugar. Processed sugar is made to be addictive. Literally, there is something called the bliss point that a lot of companies strive for because that's where we're going to have the most addictive behavior. Also, you want to reduce processed wheat, which would then become like the white flour. You want to reduce your processed potatoes, like the potato chips. You want to reduce processed corn. Now, potatoes in and of themselves are a big part of my life on the road. And in terms of eat real food on the road, I eat more packaged food than I do when I live in a house. And that is because I do need the convenience on the road, especially in the winter. I talk about the types of packaged foods that I buy and the way I choose the healthiest packaged foods 
in the chapter, How I Choose Healthy Packaged Foods several minutes down the line. One of the reasons that I sort of procrastinated this video is I was like, it's actually not necessarily a full representation to show what I eat from the road during the winter because I cook more in the summer and in the spring and even into the fall. Speaking of winter weather conditions, right now I'm in the Saguaro Desert. We have wind gusts up to 70 miles per hour. So I definitely can't get out and cook so that is just a perfect example of why I need to have the car build that allows me to prep all my food from the inside of my car, which I now have, and simultaneously allows me to have a lot of foods that don't require heating up the butane stove. So we've been talking about that first ideal of eating real food. Next, I wanna talk about the second ideal from Pollen, which is not too much so eat real food not too much not eating too much food is key for a healthy life when you are eating real food you don't necessarily want to keep going you eat to satiety and you don't necessarily want to just keep eating past the point of where you feel nice nourished and full there is a tibetan proverb that i absolutely love it says eat half walk double laugh triple and love without measure yes Yes, there's two different types of ways to sort of measure your moderation. One is external. If you really struggle with identifying your hunger cues because you have a history of yo-yo dieting, maybe a history of struggling with an eating disorder, it might be that you need an external means to help you identify what balanced health is. So external means of moderation would be something like those apps that help you count your macros or count your calories. I personally don't like to do that. I do think it can be helpful in identifying what health is. However, I personally don't wanna do that because I want food to be in, in a certain place in my life where it is not such a central focus. I don't want food to take that much time of my day. I wanna enjoy it, be nourished by it, and then move on and do other things with my life and energy. So the second way to focus on moderation is through an internal means. What I like to do to make sure I am eating in a moderate way is I don't want to be overly full. So I ask myself, could I go for a brisk walk after this meal? If the answer is yes, it means I haven't overeaten. And then I also ask, will this keep me full for three to four hours? If the answer is no, I haven't eaten enough. So we talked about eating real food, not too much, mostly plants. You guys, plants are one of the least expensive, most convenient things to eat on the road. You can get a bagged salad. A bagged salad for me will last me for two meals. And that's the pre-packaged bag salad that comes with the little kit. It'll come with the salad dressing, some type of goodies like cashews or even little tiny tortilla strips and cheese. And that'll last me for two meals. And those are about $4 each roughly. So that's $2 for the meal. And it's packed with nutrients. You've got all your greens, all of the vegetables that go into the salad. Bananas, I got, I got a couple bananas right here. This snack, dessert, part of breakfast, chop it up, put it in your yogurt, put it on top of a piece of bread or crackers with peanut butter and banana. Absolutely delicious, natural sweetness, tons of potassium, lots of fiber. So they're fantastic. Apples, so easy to eat. Fruit can be an amazing complement to a meal and it can also be a dessert. It can be a snack. It is just such a treat. I absolutely love fruit. And I love how easy it is. You get some berries, you just wash them. You can wash them at the store itself. You can just rinse them with some of the water that you have and boom, there you go. Just throw them in your cereals, throw them in your yogurt, throw them on top of your oatmeal. Very easy. I like radishes. I just like to eat them. Sometimes put a little bit of salt on them. I like broccoli with hummus, carrots with hummus. Sometimes I prefer it a little bit soft. So if I do have the ability to saute and soften them, great. If not, then I'll just eat it raw with the hummus. These are excellent, easy, cheap, healthy things to eat on the road. Eat real food, not too much, mostly plants. And then I add to that, have a plant with every meal. 
Again, I give myself a C. I do that about 75% of the time, which is good enough for me. The packaged foods that I buy. When I'm buying packaged foods, I look for the foods that have the fewest amount of ingredients. I get a lot of Lara bars. Lara bars are great. They typically have six ingredients or less and they're sweetened with dates. So I really like Lara bars. Great snack. Sometimes I turn it into a meal when I add some nut butter, some cream cheese or some fruit and they're excellent. I will get something like a whole wheat bagel. I do have a criteria that I aim for when I'm getting any kind of wheat product and that is that I aim for it to have whole wheat specifically as the main ingredient and I want it to have as much fiber as possible so at least 20% daily value of fiber per serving. Sometimes you guys you'll see I eat saltine crackers. Those don't follow that rule. That's why I say I give myself about a C. <laughs> it's good enough as long as you don't eat too many. Beans. I really like beans. I like lentil soups. I like Amy's organic soups. I like Progresso soups. Those are pre-packaged and a lot of times what I'll do is I'll also get either some pre-cooked vegetables from somewhere like Sprouts or Whole Foods and just throw them into the soup to bulk them up with more fiber and nutrients or I'll just eat them as is if I don't have the time to do that. I like to get things that are pre-packaged and frozen, something like a frozen fish thaws out in my fridge. Same with like a Lean Cuisine chicken and broccoli, Lean Cuisine type meal. Thaws in the fridge and I throw it on the skillet. Those are great ways to get some healthy nutrients on the road, but you don't have to cook very much at all because they're already basically cooked and then frozen. Nut butters, I love peanut butter. I like cashew butter, I like almond butter. All of that stuff is really, really good. I'll get pre-cooked rice throw in some canned beans, all of that. It was excellent, excellent, delicious. My first four months on the road, I used a small cooler. I did not like it at all. In fact, I barely ate any meat when I had that cooler. I didn't like touching the ice. I didn't like the volume that the ice took up in the cooler itself. And I didn't like the fact that the ice melted in one to two days. Getting my fridge has made a world of difference. I spent approximately $270 on my Apicool 19 quart fridge. Here it is. This is where I keep my fridge in my new car build. It's right behind the driver's seat and I can just reach in, look at all that food. I keep this over to make it pretty, but it also helps keep it cool. I use my Jackery 1500 to power my fridge. That particular power station will power my fridge in decent, moderate weather conditions for five days without a recharge, but I'm constantly recharging it, so it just runs my fridge all the time. It'll also run off a 12 volt. It will range from negative four, so you could freeze everything in there up to whatever temperature you want it at. I typically keep mine around 39 degrees. Here's essentially the breadth of my kitchen. I have my two thermoses for tea. I heat that tea up every single night. It holds the temperature so they're good and nice and wonderful to drink in the morning. I've got my one burner Coleman stove that I heat up with the butane. I usually carry about eight to 10 of those butanes with me at a given time and I store them in my cargo box in a basket that keeps them upright. I have about 10 of these little bottles of vinegar and what that does is I use vinegar in a paper towel to clean all my dishes. I have a pot where I heat a lot of my water and then actually I heat my soups and my oatmeals and pretty much cook completely in this skillet, which is a little funny to say, but it's non-stick, so it's easier to clean. In the rest of the video, I'm gonna show clips of lots of the food that I eat on a regular basis. At the time I've created this video, I am not sponsored by any of the products you see in this video. I just really like these foods. More yogurt, because I eat this all the time and I chopped up a little miniature orange to go in this one. More yogurt with oranges and nuts. This is the cherry flavor, it's delicious. Breakfast in a Planet Fitness parking lot.
lemon tart yogurt, blueberries, chia seeds, sunflower seeds, and almonds from the library parking lot. It's my parking lot lunch. You can see I eat yogurt a lot, usually at least every other day. This does not have added sugar. It's sweetened with stevia. For me, it's this incredible treat. I feel very nourished. Here is a healthy-ish breakfast. I took a frozen pre-cooked tilapia from the store and it thawed in my fridge and then I threw it on the skillet and just cooked it up this morning. And then I have a bag salad that I threw dressing on. You think it's eggs, right? It's just egg. When I was 30 years old, I developed a sensitivity to eggs and I couldn't eat them anymore. I was so devastated because I love eggs. So I didn't eat eggs for about seven years and then came across a product called Just Egg. It's a vegan egg alternative made with mung bean. And you would never know that you're not actually truly eating a scrambled egg. It's amazing and wonderful. And hey, even if you can't eat eggs, it's fantastic to take on the road because it's packaged in a liquid form. And so you don't have to deal with your eggs cracking and it's just very convenient for making all over the lands. I'm gonna eat it right from the skillet. Here you can see that the just egg cooks up just like any kind of scrambled egg. You know, I used to make stuff look pretty when I lived in a house. Now I just eat it. When I had access to a kitchen, I had pre-cooked a large frittata with vegetables inside and then I would just heat it up at my campsite. Here I had a just egg veggie scramble with broccoli and onion, sausage on the side, American cheese on top for dinner at a city park overlooking the ocean. Grilling up sausage in this park. Sure you gotta lug out your whole kitchen to cook, but this ain't too shabby. This is my kitchen for lunch. I will often buy pre-chopped vegetables from a store. I got this spread here from Trader Joe's, and it's a fantastic way to have a variety of vegetables without having to do too much work. I eat right out of the pan. One last thing to clean. I use everything very thoroughly recycle reduce reuse well these are my tea bags from my tea and i'm using the tea as part of washing this the tea bag itself will help me scrape from the side this will save a paper towel <laughs> and a little bit of water i use everything you guys I peanut butter with smashed up whole wheat cereal almonds sunflower seeds and chia seeds with some maple syrup that is typically a snack. It's like a little energy ball snack I do and I typically eat it with an apple. This just might be dinner tonight, guys. Just got out of the gym and wanted something fresh. So, salad. Here is my salad. I only wanted about half of the kit it came in, so I threw it in a Ziploc bag. Lunch. I had this brilliant idea. I was using this small little Ziploc bag to store the half of the salad dressing that I didn't use. And so then I thought, why not just put the rest of the salad in that bag that already has the dressing? I didn't actually like eating out of that Ziploc bag. Too small, salad kept getting caught on the zip. So I used one of my bowls. More delicious bagged salad. This is a regular staple in my kitchen. I bought a pre-chopped bag of sautéed vegetables, sautéed them up in a little oil, threw some sunflower seeds on top for some crunch, and had a little lunch meat on the side. That is my road snack, plus what I call the calmond, which is a cashew and almond eaten at the same time. Yum. Here is an example of a very quick, easy, and tasty breakfast. I've got some saltine crackers, some cream cheese, and a half of a banana. More of 
the saltine cracker with cream cheese with banana and I topped it with some cinnamon. This is my breakfast this morning. I got some saltines, some whipped cream cheese, some banana, and some blueberry. Instant oats. I do like the fiber content and health factor of whole oats. And sometimes I make those, but I find, especially mornings like this, where it's very windy outside, to be able to have this instant option. Need a little more of that chai tea. Oh, but I'm not done yet. I make my instant oats nice and fancy. Here's my final product. I got my instant oats that I made with chai tea. That was already hot and boiling. I put a dollop of peanut butter right smack in the middle of that. I don't think you can see it because it's mixed in. And then I topped it with chopped almonds and sunflower seeds. Wow, what a perfect, delicious car life breakfast. Mmm. <laughs> Same thing again. Great value. You get like, I don't know, eight or ten packets for like a buck fifty. It's very affordable. If you wanted to go healthier, I know there are some options out there that aren't sweetened, that don't have the sugar included in this. You could still do instant that you sweeten with like maple syrup or honey. You could even go with an instant non-sweetened oatmeal that you make savory with a little nutritional yeast, a few spices, maybe even some vegetables. But right now, it's raining outside, so I wouldn't be cooking. This is nice to just be able to throw together with my pre-made hot tea. This is a regular staple for me for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. These oats here have chopped apple mixed in. When the weather permits it, I'll cook whole rolled oats. These are whole rolled oats sweetened with maple syrup topped with blueberries, almonds, sunflower seeds, and chia seeds. I got a whole wheat bagel with some chive and onion cream cheese, cucumber, and some smoked salmon. More of this goodness in beautiful locations. Here I top my bagel with cream cheese, avocado, and some of the salad from one of my bagged salad kits. I am just finishing off an apple that I had for dessert right over the water. This is one of my favorite times of day sitting out in that morning sunshine, absorbing that vitamin D as I drink some of my amazing Earl Grey hot tea. Sometimes I wrap some vegetables, hummus, and cheese in some lunch meat. And then I have my finger food meals. Here I have hummus avocado, cheese, topped with some lunch meat, and cabbage. The cabbage is from my bagged salad. Here's lunch. I've got cracker, hummus, fake cheese, rotisserie chicken, lunch meat. This is basically the same thing, except in place of hummus, I have avocado, and instead of saltine crackers, I have Ritz. For this breakfast, I sauteed some broccoli and onion, mixed it into a can of refried beans, had some crackers and lunch meat on the side. An all-time simple favorite. Peanut butter on top of crackers with some fruit on the side, drinking tea out in the sunshine. There ain't much in life that makes me happier than this. A tuna tomato avocado on saltine dinner. Apples and peanut butter for breakfast in Santa Barbara. Apples and peanut butter for lunch in San Simeon. Apples and peanut butter for dinner in Ventura. I have apples and peanut butter as a meal, usually at least four times a week. Okay, what we've got here 
is a lemon Lara bar topped with cream cheese. I would definitely get whipped cream cheese because look at that's messy and frustrating. So I would get whipped cream cheese in a little container next time. I got half an apple and some almonds. So this is my nice breakfast. Here is the Lara bar. There are six ingredients in this thing. These are pretty darn healthy. No artificial sweeteners, plant-based, gluten-free, dairy-free, and vegan. Now it's not vegan when I put my cream cheese on it. And the ingredients include dates, almonds, cashews, lemon juice concentrate, lemon juice solids, and lemon oil. Pretty good, I like them. Perfectly ripe figs, fancy brie, and calmonds with a side of tea. I didn't purchase these items, but I wanted to share with you that many stores have options like this, shredded, pre-cooked, healthy, lean meats, and vegetables. You could eat that as a meal in and of itself or throw them into soups, onto a burrito, into a salad. Options like these make eating healthy from the road possible and delicious. If you have favorite meals that you take with you on the road while camping or traveling, definitely feel free to put those in the comments below. Also, I plan to do these kind of videos a couple times a year because how I eat in the winter is quite different than how I eat in the summer. So I'll have another video out in, I don't know, six or seven months-ish. In the next several months, I'm gonna be launching a channel called Sweetest Freedom here on YouTube. And it's gonna be a compliment to this channel. It's where I bring sort of the breadth of my whole professional work in psychology, health, wellness, philosophy, and spirituality, and just share all about that. So I'll be letting you know more as I get close to launching that channel. I'm really excited about it. And if you found any of this information useful in the video and think that weight loss coaching, addiction recovery coaching, or clarity consultation about things going on in your life could be useful to you, check out my website at sweetestfreedom.com. Like, comment, turn on that notification bell, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. To follow my adventures as well as to get more car life tips, tricks, and nomadic philosophy, like, comment, and subscribe.